Welcome back to the tutorial series on how to make a custom sound engine using Unity and Super Collider. So in our last video we showed you how to set up Unity using Float and how to use the OSC handler uh, as well as how to send a message to the client. So we went into the player script and this is where we're going to go now. So go to the player script, have that open, and what we did was we did a uh, on move, we sent a message. We also sent a message for uh, the chop sound, which is can't move. We sent messages for exit, food pickup, and soda, which we went over. And we also did one for lose food, which is an enemy hit, and game over. So the reason why there are send messages for health with every other message is basically every time you do an action in the game, you lose or gain health. We wanted to be able to track this and use it in Super Collider later to work on a music system with the health. So if you'd like, you can enter in the same messages that we did with the health system, and we can show you how to create a uh, music system based off of health, but it's definitely not necessary to continue on with the tutorial. All right, next up, we're going to get into Super Collider and make some audio. Thanks for watching. Hi, and welcome back to our tutorial series on how to create your own custom sound engine using Super Collider. In this video, we're going to do a quick explanation of how we set up our OSC definitions in Super Collider to receive messages. And then we're going to show how we got these definitions to post messages to Super Collider's post window to confirm that we're receiving these OSC messages. So first, what you're going to need to do is launch Super Collider. Once you've got Super Collider up and running, you need to make sure that your server is booted. If you don't have it booted, then you're not going to be hearing any audio. So you can do this a couple number of ways. The easiest way is to just hit Command B. That will launch your server. Or you can go up to the menu and go to Language, Boot Server. And once your server has gone through the process of booting, the little numbers down in your server meter will be green, and you're good to go. Now what you need to do after getting Super Collider booted up is you need to create something called an OSC definition. This is your template for receiving messages that are being sent from Unity that we covered in the last tutorials. And we're going to need a couple of these for all of the different instances that we sent OSC from Unity. So to do this, first you need to type out oscdef.new followed by a pair of parentheses. If you click inside the parentheses and hit shift command spacebar, it'll pull up a little list of all the different arguments that can be used in the definition. The first one that we're actually going to use is the argument called key, which is essentially the name of the OSC definition. This is used to determine which definition you're using at any given time. It, it kind of makes it its own identity, so you're only getting one definition per message. So in this key, you'll need to type in a backslash followed by whatever the name of the definition that you want it to be. For this example, we're going to name this OSC definition food because that's the message that we're working with from Unity right now. The next argument is the actual function itself. So what exactly is this OSC definition going to do when Super Collider receives the OSC message for food pickup? We have our OSC definition for food pickup set up to play our sound effects for food whenever we receive that message from Unity. So you need to create a function with an argument of message. And what we need to do to confirm that we're receiving OSC from Unity is print that message to Super Collider's post window. Now, to make sure that we're actually posting the correct message to the post window. We need to make sure this OSC definition is looking for the appropriate tag. We talked about tags in earlier tutorials, but for this one, we need to make sure that this definition is looking for the food tag. When you're typing in the argument for the tag, make sure to use single quotes. If you don't do that, Super Collider won't recognize it as a string and it will just look for the first letter of it. But if you use single quotes, it will look for the entire string for the word food. The next argument, uh, we just put nil here. It's technically the source ID for Super Collider, which defaults to your local IP address. So nil will just let it be what it already is. And the last argument is the port. 
Super Collider defaults to 57120 as its port, but we wanna go ahead and hard code this in just to be sure because that's the actual port that we're sending all of these messages across from Unity. So once all of that's done and you have everything kind of closed off, the functions are good, this is essentially your template for OSC definitions. Now, there will be other instances where you need definitions to be triggered from different messages being sent from Unity. And in that case, you just copy and paste this template, change the key or the name of the actual definition, and then be sure you change the tag that the definition is looking for so it will only be triggered by OSC messages with the tag that you put in. And this video actually shows what the setup will look like once you have all of your OSC definitions created. We took the template that we created in a previous episode and copied it for all instances of sound that we found in the game, changed the name and the tag so all of these definitions are only responding to one specific event in the game. So we have a definition for different events such as game over, enemy hit, exiting a level, moving, picking up food, or picking up soda. So now that all of these are set up, if you run this entire block of code, barring any errors, it will load all of these definitions onto the server. And if you go over to Unity and launch the game, you can play it and it will start posting messages to the window for various player actions, such as picking up food, chopping blocks, picking up sodas, uh, getting hit by the enemy, or even moving. And if you die, it'll actually post the message for game over and go back to the title screen. One thing that we wanted to let you guys know is that there are things in our game that aren't there by default. We kind of modded and tweaked the original game to add a little bit of flair. So when you get hit by an enemy in our videos, your character flashes a little bit and the screen flashes red. That's not there in the stock version. We just added that. So if yours doesn't do that, don't be alarmed. We went in and made those tweaks after the fact. Alright guys, thanks for watching. There will be more tutorials after this one, so stay posted.